Listen, everybody, to the words I have to say. Better get ready, because the Lord is coming one day. Thank you for tuning in to the Prophet Daniel's Report. This is Daniel White IV, the eldest son of Daniel White III. The intro music that you just heard is my late grandfather, Daniel White Jr., singing a song titled Get Ready. Today, my father, Daniel White III, is going to share with you news and information relating to biblical prophecy so that you can be prepared for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Daniel White III is the national best-selling author of over 20 books, including Just Jesus and The Prayer Motivator. He has spoken in meetings across the United States and in 23 foreign countries, and is the president of Gospelite Society and Torch Ministries International. Now, here's your host, Daniel White III. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Prophet Daniel's Report. This is report number 448. My name is Daniel White III, here to remind you that Jesus Christ is coming back one day soon and that you need to be prepared. This broadcast, this podcast, is not about predictions, nor is it about setting dates as some foolishly have done. However, it is all about preparation. First today, let's look at some signs of his coming in the news. The disciples asked Jesus Christ in Matthew 24, 3, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus Christ then went on to give them and us clear signs that show us when we can begin to expect to see the coming of the Lord and the end of the world as we know it. Beloved, looking at world events through the lens of the Word of God, let's look at some headlines from today's news that point to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. First today, under the sign category of wars and rumors of wars, according to the Jerusalem Post, Israel announced on Tuesday that five soldiers were killed in an attempted infiltration into Israel via a cross-border tunnel from Gaza. After the infiltration, the IDF warned thousands of Palestinians to flee their homes in areas around Gaza City, and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Israel will press its air and ground offensive in the Gaza Strip. Despite an agreement for a temporary ceasefire, Hamas, which controls the Gaza Strip, continued to unleash deadly mortar and rocket fire, triggering air raid sirens across Israel. Second today under the sign category of wars and rumors of wars, According to the Washington Post, a U.S.-backed effort to arm the moderate Syrian opposition is finally ramping up along the Turkey-Syria border, but it may come too late to save the rebels from defeats on two fronts, by President Bashar Assad's government and by the extremists seeking to carve out an Islamic state. The United States and its allies have begun accelerating the supply of arms and ammunition to a small number of vetted rebel groups in northern Syria. Yet, even as the fresh support arrives, challenges are mounting for the embattled moderates as rebel commanders say the outlook for the revolt against Assad's rule is now bleaker than at any time in the past three years. Third, today, under the sign category of distress among nations, 
According to the Washington Post, the Obama administration on Sunday released overhead surveillance images it said were evidence that Russia has fired artillery rounds from its side of the border against Ukrainian military units. The photographs are labeled as indicating fire from multiple rocket launchers inside Russia and targets they have struck inside Ukraine as the ground war between Russia backed separatist forces in eastern Ukraine and government troops has escalated this past week. Charges and countercharges between Russia and the West have reached fever pitch. Fourth, today under the sign category of increased persecution, according to Fox News, the U.S. State Department issued a dire report on Monday on the state of religious freedom around the world, with an alarming warning that the Christian presence in Syria and elsewhere in the Middle East is becoming a shadow of its former self. The analysis was included as part of a comprehensive report on religious freedom around the world in 2013. The report cited a flood of examples of governments and militant groups cracking down on religious minorities everywhere from Pakistan to Egypt to China. The victims included Christians but also Hindus, Muslims, and others, and of course, Jews. Fifth, today under the sign category of the building of the Third Temple, according to the Jewish Telegraphic Association, as Egypt, Qatar, the U.S., and the U.N. write proposals for Israel, Hamas ceasefires, one organization based in Jerusalem's old city, hopes to compose a peace plan of a different kind. A detailed architectural blueprint for the third Jewish temple on Jerusalem's Temple Mount. The Temple Institute, which has recreated 60 vessels to be used in a third temple and which sponsors educational programs about the temple worldwide, has created a $100,000 Indiegogo campaign to draft plans for a third temple. The organization issued a statement saying that building the temple would usher in a new era of universal harmony and peace, as prophesied in the Bible. The statement added, it is not enough to wait and pray for the third temple. It is a biblical obligation to build it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says in Matthew 25, verses 31 through 33, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. And dear friend, you can read these stories in more detail and get more Second Coming related news on our website at secondcomingherald.com. Now it is time for Prophecy Boot Camp. Prophecy Boot Camp is where we deal with the basics of prophecy, the second coming of Christ, and what will happen in the future according to the Bible. Our aim here is not to make predictions, but to help you get prepared by understanding how things will unfold in the end times. Our topic for today is titled, After the Tribulation, Part 1. After the Tribulation, Part 1, from Dr. Tim LaHaye's fine book, Understanding Bible Prophecy for Yourself. When Christ returns at the end of the tribulation and finishes his glorious appearing, there will be only two kinds of people left on the earth. The Jews, number one, and number two, those who are good to the Jews, whom Jesus called my brethren 
in Matthew 25:40. This latter group will be among those who refuse to follow the Antichrist by worshiping him and taking his mark. Instead, they will risk their lives by endeavoring to protect the Jews who are targeted for persecution by the Antichrist. All those who accept the mark of the beast during the tribulation period will be killed at Christ's coming. Those who accepted the mark of the Heavenly Father will be martyred during the seven-year tribulation period. They are the tribulation saints described in Revelation 7. The purpose of the judgment of the nations is to determine who enters Christ's kingdom in their natural bodies. In all likelihood, it will not be a huge population. It will consist of only two kinds of natural bodied people, converted Israel and those Gentile believers who during the tribulation defied the Antichrist and reached out to help the Jews and others in time of need. During this time, God will fulfill the many Old Testament prophecies given to the nation of Israel. He will create a new heart in them to obey his will and commit themselves to a lifetime of serving him. With Satan bound so he cannot tempt the world, the kingdom age with its identic or, ut or utopian existence will be unlike any period the world has ever known. Beloved, if the Lord tarries his coming and we live, we will continue looking at this topic in our next broadcast slash podcast. In closing, let's consider what God wants you and I to do in light of his second coming. Jesus Christ said in Luke 19, 13, to occupy till I come. In light of that, we are continuing our Bible study series on the books of First and Second Thessalonians, which Paul wrote to believers who had concerns about the second coming of Jesus Christ and what they should do as they waited. This section is titled Changed Lives, Part 11 from the book Waiting on the Second Coming by Ray C. Stedman. A striking feature about the Thessalonian letters is that each chapter in both letters ends with a reference to the coming of the Lord. We look back to his first coming, but among these early believers, the great hope lay in his coming again. They believed what the angels had said to the disciples on the Mount of Olives. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. It was the ever-present hope of the early church, and that hope became the dominant theme of the Thessalonian letters. Their answer to the threat of personal death was a firm belief in Jesus' resurrection. Jesus had said, Because I live, ye shall live also. Now they were to wait for God's Son from heaven. Dear friends, if the Lord tarries his coming and we live, we will continue looking at this topic in our next broadcast slash podcast. Let's pray. Holy Father, God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for coming the first time. We thank you for coming the second time. We know that you're going to do it. We just don't know when. But help us to live like you can come and you will come today. Forgive us of our sins, our failures, and our faults. Crucify our flesh and fill us with the fullness and the power of your Holy Spirit. To love right, live right, think right, and do right every day until you come. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Dear friend, remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew twenty four forty two. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doeth come. Matthew twenty four forty four says, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. If you are not ready for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, may I encourage you to get ready today by receiving him as your Lord and Savior. 
John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose from the dead by the power of God for you so that you can live eternally with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today to save your soul and he will do it. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Keep looking up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator when he prayed, Even so come, Lord Jesus. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in to the Prophet Daniel's Report. Remember, you can stay up to date with prophecy news and events on our website, at secondcomingherald.com. If you would like to know more about accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior, what to do after salvation, or looking for a good church home, please visit gospelitesociety.com for more information. This radio broadcast can be heard daily on Live 365, and Radio7.com, gospelightworldradio.com, Buzzsprout, iTunes, Blog Talk Radio, and can be downloaded from numerous outlets online. God bless, and until next time, keep looking up for your redemption draw if not. Now, here's a song that will encourage you as you await Christ's return. You got to get your business straight. It's time to get your business straight.